The Whale, directed by Darren Aronofsky, is an adaptation of, of the play The Whale. It stars Brennan Fraser as Charlie, a 600-pound reclusive English professor who's dying of congestive heart failure. Knowing these are his final days, he attempts to reconnect with his daughter, whom he left when she was eight, a feat that proves to be quite difficult. The presence of a missionary with a murky past further complicates the situation, tying together elements of why Charlie's life changed so much in the first place. I'll say that's a pretty good spoiler-free summary if i do say so myself it doesn't mention hong chow i wasn't able to squeeze her in there we will talk plenty about her but i don't want to spoil this too much a because it's new Mm -hmm. and b because this is i think a movie that a lot of people should see and i don't want to even reveal elements of oh well this is who this person is and things like that agree yeah sure uh this uh, I also think that we're going to be talking about this movie uh, in in a couple of months. For and, sure. And at which point we can, ha- we can have uh, a different conversation that gets into it a little bit more deeply. I agree. Devotees of this uh, program know we love a good brunch score, which is uh, when the audience score is way higher than the tomato meter. This has a 66% from critics and a 92% audience score. 66. God I think damn, critics got to chill. I God, thought damn. this movie was literally. I thought this movie was awesome. Uh, I thought. I thought if I had to guess, I would have predicted that it would be critics completely like it, the yeah. opposite. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this movie was awesome. Uh, devastating. Yes. Just a kind of masterclass in sadness and something that you're not going to want to see for a little bit. I'm glad that I saw it as soon as it came out because. We probably will be rewatching this come award season, and I would much rather wait a month and a half before seeing it again than bang yeah. it out. Like this, this ain't a Star Wars movie. You're not going it's back to back. Sure days. is not. Uh, and one of my notes is that this movie was like pretty excruciating. Yeah, pretty excruciating for a a lot of different reasons. And like this is gonna sound like um like a complaint or like a a detriment or whatever. Like it's excruciating. The pace is really slow and it is very self-contained. So it is tough to get through, but that is by design. It is self-contained because it's a story about a guy who's a recluse who does not leave his apartment. So literally like every scene, almost every scene in this movie takes place in that apartment. It is about like the very slow passage of time inside those walls and about something that is extremely depressing and and gut-wrenching yeah i mean my personally my least favorite thing other than like horrible like violent terrible things like to see conveyed in a film is old people or dying people sitting around eating chips we always bring that up like i i I really didn't like i had a tough time with like uh nebraska and films like that because that 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 rattles me in some sort of weird personal way where like i don't want to ever be just like sitting around kind of doing nothing bowl and like having company and there's a bowl of chips there even though like people do that whatever but i don't know it just like it just like the the death of ambition or yeah, something like well, that and that that's, is and and that's funny because i mean we talked about it over the past couple of days there this 2022 has been an incredible year for just extremely depressing movies about like kind of losing your purpose and just kind of aimlessly wandering through life yeah this is sort of one of those it this one has a bit more direction um and there are like uplifting elements to this movie but largely it's about somebody like losing their way and kind of just waiting to die. Yeah. So I hate seeing that sort of thing. And typically in movies, it'll be portrayed in passing and I'll just like wince and grimace as I'm looking at it. I watched two hours of this Mm -hmm. and was like moved to tears by it. Mm -hmm. And 
so maybe it's uh like devastation porn in some ways because really like this guy takes hit after hit after hit some self-inflicted some oh, uh come up and there's a lot for, of self-pity right and there's one scene in particular which like not to keep relating to this horrible thing like hopefully nobody relates too much to any of this movie because it's all just very very sad but uh there is a uh binge eating scene where one interaction just goes a little subpar and it's enough to kind of set this guy off and whatever your vice may be like if you have a bad relationship with food be it alcohol whatever i thought that i don't know i i, I just felt that was so so real and so well done you know what scene i'm talking it, about yes yeah I it mean, is you very are, hard are, yeah, to right. miss it yeah you definitely know the binge easy but like you know what i'm talking about like the thing that kind of sets him off yeah it's a Wait. it's a small thing that otherwise should not like derail your life right but that's god that's so fucking it, human yes yeah Where, and like it just and i mean the way that you were explaining it to me before i saw it was like it's essentially a blackout yeah it's essentially a blackout where like n there's nothing outside of this guy's peripherals other than like what he's doing and how he's like coping and handling his feelings and it's just by eating and just like basically torn tearing his apartment into like a food tornado. Yeah, it is. It's tough, man. It's very tough. And we talked about it, too. Um, this is a tough movie to uh, to dive into the movie theater concessions during. Uh, we both had like I texted you and said, oh, my God, I had this terrible book. Why did I do this? I, I brought in nachos. And by broad, I purchased them at the theater. But like walking into the theater, like as I'm holding them, I'm like, wait, this might, is this going to be a quiet movie or whatever? Like it's super quiet. Uh, it obviously the food element of this not appetizing movie is very, very tough. This person has used food to cope with unspeakably devastating things in his life. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to speak after seeing this movie, let alone crunch some salty carbs into your face. So I texted you being like, dude, why did I do this? I'm so dumb. And then, uh, like, what, a, a week later, two weeks later, you see the movie and text me. You're like, wait, shoot, just remembered, walked in, <laughs> brought snacks. Ah, uh, is this going to be bad? And I was like, ah, uh, inhale them, eat the, them now. The scene the scene of the food tornado was me trying to finish all of my food before the movie started. That's probably At, the loudest part of the movie, so like, if there's any time. Yeah, but I wasn't trying to eat during that scene. Uh, so like, while Nicole Kidman was talking about how heartbreak feels good in a place like this, yeah. I was talking about how heartburn feels good there in it a place is, buddy. like that. Um, yeah, I thought everybody was great in this movie except for, uh, the, the missionary. Yeah. So the missionary, I, and I don't like doing that. Yeah. I don't like being like this person wasn't good in this movie, but it was, it was, it was illuminated by the fact that everybody else was so good. And that storyline needed to be there, but that was the only imperfect thing about the movie and that character is important for so many reasons and i thought that sadie sink who's great in this movie mm -hmm. played very well off him i didn't think that this guy uh stunk up the joint but it was it was a bunch of heavy hitters and then a, a an actor yeah so that, that's like shout out this kid like i'm definitely not uh slog is that the like i'm, I'm not i'm not not sl slogging you you hear uh you you did that. No one is going to come away from the movie being like, "Oh man, I loved that character," or "I loved that storyline." Again, it was important, but that was the that was like the it's like quote putting unquote, a worst it's, it's part. Like, it's like putting a regular person in like a bodybuilder's competition. Yeah, what <laughs> being it, like, yeah, go out there and hang hang tough with those people. I mean, but I I loved Sadie Sink's yeah. storyline and how. I mean, I mean, I liked I I liked the character. But I, I thought the performance wasn't fantastic. Um, not not I'm talking about the missionary still. Yeah. Like I, I liked every character because every character in this movie was like pretty deeply, but also like pretty humanly flawed. They oh, yeah. they all had like what the fuck are you doing? Sort of elements to their characters. Oh yeah. Uh, with maybe the exception 
of Liz, played by Hong Chow. Oh, disagree. Re- I mean, I mean, there were definitely like, what the fuck are you doing? Yes, uh, but like, yeah. but in like a less malicious. Oh, we're right. Re- that, way like there is the, a lot of the other characters had elements of maliciousness to it's them. It's all very human, right? And uh, I would say this without getting into spoilers. I think that Liz was the biggest victim in this movie. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and she has to. Yeah, I mean the uh, his ex wife as well. I mean they they're all victims of a lot of things, and I I, I know that Charlie's character feels that. I have done all this, and his like dying wish is to reconnect with his daughter and to feel that he is leaving the world uh, a good person, which he so strongly believes, and of course she hates him for for that. But he thinks that like everything is his fault, and it's not his, not all of it is his fault, and it's life, and very bad things happen to all these people i agree though where in liz's case it's like man the world truly dealt you a shit hand but you could say the same thing of sadie sink's character yeah a hundred percent this movie by the way set in i would guess the maybe like early noughties right the early what noughties i got british on your ass what is that the early uh, oh 20s you, you you may say like aughts yeah like the early 2000s uh, I would say probably like a little, mm, a little later. Yeah, like yeah 2008. maybe maybe like mid two thousands, two thousand eight, two thousand ten. Right. You got to remember, it takes place in Idaho, so they might be a little bit further behind. Shoot, this could be set in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. They're still on Facebook. Yeah. Just given the technology, the language, um, there was. I mean, they're doing they're doing like Zoom classes. Not Zoom for sure. Not Zoom. But like like. A, a, that's, a zoom that's, offshoot which might be more of a, a a testament to like it being later that seemed like early online course sort of really? stuff but i mean you, you're right there was like video cam yeah. stuff so yeah so anyway it, it was set in let's say at least 10 years in the past somewhere like that yeah. or maybe around 10 years in the past so the language is uh, accurately reflected. There's an R bomb. There is an R bomb, which it's definitely delivered by the correct character. Yes. Like if anybody is going to call something that, it's going to be this character. How did you feel about uh, the very very end? Uh, I I didn't didn't love it at first view, but like the more I sat with it, I really liked it, and I think that there. I think part of the reason is. The more I thought about it, the more I thought that there could be multiple interpretations of the end. Yeah. And I don't know how much we can get into it without spoiling stuff, but I really want to have that conversation. And that's like one of my favorite things that a movie can do is be like, hey, get two people together and be like, hey, what did you think happened here? Yeah. That shit is fun. And I I, I really like how they delivered it. Yeah. I... The... There are a couple things in this movie that I think can can be opened up to interpretation and discussion. Yeah. And I really like that. The beginning, by the way, I thought was great, too. A very memorable opening scene. Yeah. But it ties together, like, it really you gives learn, you, you everything learn a lot. you need. You learn a lot from, like, the first 20 seconds. I love his relationship with uh, that essay. He has one essay, so he's an English professor, and there's one essay that is basically his like oxygen mask. Mm-hmm. And I love that throughout the movie. I, I mean, I loved this movie. I thought it was so, awesome. So like, it's clear that we both really like this movie. And that I, I, I didn't say Hong Chao's name enough times. Hong Chao, I thought was incredible in this. I think that Frazier was great. Hong Chao, great. This Hong Chao is putting forth a stool bargain. Um, I was going to say... Uh, who was in everything last year? Uh, I was going to say Octo- Octavia Spencer kind uh, of... Uh, uh, she, she has, she has uh, Octavia Spencer potential. Who uh, uh, a Blanchettian? Yeah. Perf- what do you give this movie on Letterboxd? I give this right now. I have it at four out of five 
but I will say I think that there's a potential for me to for for it to hit four point five. It has already done four point five for yeah. me. Yeah, four point. Yeah, I could I could see that. It, you know, I the the toughness which with which I kind of like had to sit through mm-hmm. maybe took away the half star. But I, I, again, I think that it's very intentional, and uh, I don't want to take too much away from like my score of it just based off of that. 